Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Today we're going to do a quick look at Q4 OS. Uh, this is the new 2.6 release codenamed Scorpion. So this distro here is based on Debian and it contains uh, KDE as a desktop and it has Plasma and Trinity. So there are a couple of options that you have to go with. So first let's go ahead and look at the website information. So uh, here we have the release note. Um, so of course this is LTS. Uh, it is based on Debian 9.5 stretch. Um, they have uh, Trinity R1405 uh, desktop, uh, which I'm not quite as knowledgeable about Trinity. Um, and there is also Plasma 5.8 LTS desktop as well. And uh, the other thing, there's a few things about this that uh, make it a really nice option. One of those is they also have a Pi release. Uh, they still do support uh, 32 and 64 bit uh, if you're using Trinity, of course. And really one of their biggest selling points is that uh, they will actually do some customizations for you if you need to. Uh, basically a form of paid support. So their downloads, uh, you have the uh, the Plasma is available as 64-bit, uh, Trinity is available 64 or 32-bit. Uh, there's just uh, installation CD information here. There is a Windows installer. Um, this is Raspberry Pi, which might be something I might want to look into. So there's a lot of different, a uh, lot of different features and functionality into this. So if you check out their homepage where they're talking about the project, uh, you'll see that they're really focusing and targeting this as more of a project for a business sector and uh, they will talk about doing professional support for business. So that's one of those selling points of this distro is if you are looking for a good Linux distro, which has this, the stability of Debian, but you're worried about actually support, um, you know, this is a good logical choice because they have the option for the paid support built right into it, including making core level programming as needs be, which I'm guessing is, is going to be an extra fees for things, um, as it should be uh, to do that level of customization. And uh, that is really what their target happens to be. So let's go ahead and boot this guy up. So I've already installed this on a virtual box and uh, we're gonna boot it up and hopefully run it for the first time. There's some initial setup screens I wanted to, to see. So we're gonna walk through this together. I've not even gotten in here to look into it. Okay, so here is uh, our login screen. We have a few options for desktops, Plasma TDE. We're gonna keep it where it is. I'm gonna put in my super secret four digit password that is definitely not Q4 OS and we are going to log in. All right, now when we get into the login screen here, um, we see this welcome screen, which has, um, uh, basically this just kind of goes through a lot of different options. So uh, we have, can set auto login, uh, we have kickoff start menu, uh, let's see what does that do, switch to alternative kickoff menu, we've ranged modern style smart menu, offers uh, search bars, favorites, tabs, history, and more. I'm guessing that's probably this menu here, which is like the standard. Let's go ahead and click that button. Oh, okay, so that's only available for Trinity, bummer. Um, we can turn on or turn off desktop effects. I'm just gonna leave that whatever the default is because we're in a virtual machine. Desktop profiler will automatically install and configure a set of additional applications and tools in a single click. You'll be able to select between different desktop profiles. Um, installing applications, you'll be directed to Q4OS web resources to download and install standalone useful applications and proprietary codecs. So if you want, um, uh, if you want to be able to run media, you might want to do that. Media such as VLC or M player make use of these codecs in order to provide DVD support. Let's go ahead and click on that guy there and uh, let's see what happens. One of the things I'm noticing right away, it might be having to do with my screen resolution, but it does look like there's a couple of places that there was text a little bit cut off. If you rewind the video a little bit and see that screen just before I pushed OK, uh, there was a little bit of text there that seemed to be cut off a little bit. Of course, you can see here there's some cut off here. It's like the buttons aren't, uh, aren't coded to be big enough uh, for that. Uh, let's have a look at what this desktop profiler is. All right. 
Um, so here we have full feature desktop, which web browser, office suite, recommended applications. We have the basic desktop with common utilities, system tools, and libraries. And keep uh, Q4OS uh, operating system, you'll be free to set up anything by you yourself. Okay. So this is recommended for um, highly experienced users. This is recommended for regular users, contains a full suite of things. This is one of the things that I'm not a big fan of is, is how a little bit clunky that this box is. Uh, again, this could be, um, this is probably just maybe a function of the screen resolution. That's a little bit better, but it does have a, the, it does have an older style to it. But let's go ahead and do that. Let's click install. This might take some time. Okay, and we're back. That took a little over 10 minutes to install everything. It did install a lot of applications. So it's asking us, do we want to reboot now? Let's go ahead and reboot. So I looked at a few of the applications it was installing. Um, and did that already reboot? I don't know if that already rebooted. Didn't look like it rebooted. We're going to go ahead and reboot. So it installed several applications that uh, I'm not sure I would necessarily have wanted to use, but um, probably made some sense from a business perspective. Uh, Google Chrome was one of the ones that I saw. They did install the full LibreOffice suite. Um, they installed the Java runtime environment, which really you only want to install if you need it. Um, but uh, they did install that. And I didn't get a chance to see everything else that was installed. So here we are back to our login screen. Let's see if anything changed here. Nothing changed there. Let's go ahead and log in. And now we'll get a chance to see uh, what the desktop looks like. So it looks like kind of the default's a minimal install and then you have the option to do a more bloated install and then um, uh, and then a few, uh, few other things. So there's install applications. I think this goes, okay, this runs up this runs up a software center, and um, I didn't see this. So here's Chromium, here's Chrome, Synaptic. Uh, I did not see Synaptic installed by default. Um, we do have Discover, which is not that one. I did not actually see that software installer as I was looking through this. So let's see, there's System. Their software center, which is Discover. So that's probably the, the better one. I just didn't see this particular software installer. So um, here, I guess what I'd probably recommend here is maybe just install Synaptic and then, you know, leave this one alone. Oh, that's uninstall now. Um, so apparently that toggles install uninstall. I did not see Synaptic installed. is already installed, so cancel. Hopefully I don't uninstall it. Um, I did not see it in the program list, but maybe I missed it. All right, so we're gonna walk through. Now this is after we installed that first main default one. So we have a formula editor. Uh, we have, uh, let's see, it's same thing. Really, formula editor, was that? So mathematics and science both gives us the same application, which is the formula editor. So that's a little bit redundant. Here we have some card games, uh, which generally have come with uh, LibreOffice. We have uh, Image Magic, LibreOffice Draw, but we don't actually have a, a uh, graphic editor application that I can see. Uh, we have Conqueror as the default. It gives us Google Chrome, and then we have Thunderbird was installed. As far as multimedia, we have Brasario, VLC, Pulse Audio, Volume Control, and the YouTube browser. Office, we were given the full suite of LibreOffice. We have a PDF viewer. Under settings, we have Configure Ice T Web. Uh, JD key, uh, JDK, <laughs> JDK, and our system settings, and then under our utilities, 
Uh, this is one of the things that seems a little bit uh, redundant. We have two file managers. We have Crusader, which I'm guessing they probably did this because Dolphin does not allow root mode. And so I guess they give us Crusader so we have a root mode file manager. So that's, I would consider that a good, um, uh, a good benefit over uh, KDE where generally you only have Dolphin and it's not... Uh, it doesn't give you root access. We do though have KSIS guard and I did see HTOP in here. So HTOP is also installed. So let's go ahead and look at HTOP. So we are running on 356 megabytes of memory even after, I guess this is just after a reboot. Uh, so that's actually, um, actually not too bad. Um, as far as uh, we can open with Dolphin, configure, here's panels. Of course, everything else is pretty standard KDE. One of the things I'd like to see is, can I increase our screen resolution? That'd be nice. All right. Looks like this is it. I would have to probably install the um, VirtualBox Guest Editions in order to go any larger than this. Compositor, Gamma. All right. So as far as uh, as far as everything else is concerned, from somebody who runs Debian um, and uh, and likes KDE, I do have a uh, KDE Debian. This is very much uh, very much like you would get if you're just running Debian KDE. Of course, it does have fewer games for whatever reason. Debian comes with a lot of games pre-installed. It's one of the things that I wish I'd have the option to say, "Hey, yo, I don't play games. Want to turn this off?" <laughs> but I don't really have that option. Um, we can install better web browsers. We have Conqueror, which I don't particularly consider a really good web browser. Uh, and we have Google Chrome. So I'm going to want to boot up our, um, uh, I'm going to want to boot up Discover here and install something else. If I'd want to use this, got to remember where Discover is. I'll just search for it. That'll work. <clears throat> All right, so over here, let's go for Firefox. Do we have Firefox? We have Ice Weasel, KDocker. Really, why can I not find Firefox? Applications, internet. No, I don't want that one. One of the things I don't really like about the Discover store is too buggy. Like, I'm not seeing. Okay, internet. Web browsers. We have Chromium. Gnome, Ice Weasel, Midori, and Quipzilla. Um, Ice Weasel is, of course, a, um, uh, this is the rebranded version of Firefox. Usually, like, modern Debian, though, it still uses Firefox. Ice Weasel is something they use back in, the, back in, I believe, in Jesse and before. So, technically, if we install Ice Weasel, it will be like installing Firefox. It's just kind of funny to me that, um, uh, that this is based on the updated Debian packages and we still have ice weasel and not firefox but oh well let's go with that and see which version it is okay let's go ahead and have a look at that it's not showing up there it is Let's go back under internet, see if it shows up yet. All right, there it is. Now it's showing up. All right, so it is. Uh, it is a modern one. It's. I just haven't seen. Uh, I haven't seen that called um, Ice Weasel in Debian for a while, actually. Uh, usually they give you Firefox ESR. Uh, let's see, so this is Firefox Quantum uh, version 60, so a little older version, which is usually what we expect to find. Uh, everything else here is pretty much Debian. So essentially what we have with Q4 OS is a modified Debian that will give you a minimal or a more, we'll use the word bloated for lack of another word. It's really not bad bloated. It's just 
uh, a minimal install or a lots of application install. Curious though in that lots of applications with everything else they give us, it's curious they don't give us either GIMP or Krita, something to actually edit images that's not a terminal base like Image Magic. Um, and uh, they do offer though that support and that is a good uh, kind of a good stand, um, a good reason a business particularly might want this. So this is definitely marketed more towards a business user. Uh, it is Debian uh, stable and with KDE. Uh, and so you're probably not gonna go wrong. Of course, the one criticism of KDE is the system settings is for many people very complicated. Oh, for those curious, this runs Plasma 5.8. I know that's been a point of discussion as you're running um, KDE applications. Uh, this runs fi Plasma 5.8. Um, the, one of the criticisms is there are a lot of settings and it is kind of difficult to figure out where you are in some of the settings. Uh, the more recent version of this makes this a little bit easier to navigate than this. Uh, but it's, I mean, to me, it's not too bad. It's just, there's a lot of settings to figure out a lot more than most other desktop environments, which is kind of refreshing if you're coming from GNOME where you have zero system settings and customizability that you can actually do. Um, so this to me, uh, to me, this is a, is a good distribution. Uh, it is targeted more towards business users and uh, they do have a good attention to detail with your, uh, your initial started startup screen with being able to choose between the minimal install or the extra software install. And so with that type of thing, I'd say that, yeah, this is a pretty good distribution. Will it be my daily driver? Uh, probably not. Uh, I think their biggest selling point is the business support, which is huge. Uh, of course, if you don't know how huge it is, that's Red Hat. You know, Red Hat is is in the business of providing support for a free open you know, a free open source operating system. So the the model for this, what this is is different, is that that is mostly for server technology, not as much for the desktop. This is specifically geared towards business support focus on a desktop environment based on a solid Debian base application. So for that instances, this is a good distribution. Daily driver for everything else? Probably not, but I still give this distribution two thumbs up. You're not gonna go wrong with Debian. Uh, I'm not seeing any major issues. And really the only things that are, um, that are standing out from the regular Debian install um, is, like I said, the Ice Weasel thing was, I'm not, I'm a little confused on that. I'm sure somebody knows the logical reason why. Please tell me why in the comments down below. Um, and uh, they have their, they have the the startup screen that gives you, walks you through installing Codex, which uh, I think is an option in Debian now to install your Codex, but that's pretty easy. Uh, the option to choose different types of installs, minimal or not minimal, that's good. A lot of good features, a lot of good bonuses to this. So overall, definitely check this desktop out, uh, particularly if you are in a business setting. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. You can check out um, more information on uh, on this channel at switchlinux.com forward slash support. I just noticed how weird the lighting in this video is. That's what I get for using um, not my usual light. <laughs> wow, I should have set that up, but it's just gotten late. Uh, but anyway, you can support me over there at switchlinux.com forward slash support. Check out the Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Tom M. That's T-O-M-M. -M. And I do have a merchandise, coffee cups, t-shirts, things like that at shop.switchtolinux.com. So thanks for coming along and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.